Hello, I have Leah Harper here with us today to talk about a cool trick for using less stock imagery in your cover design. Aaliyah doesn't have any published books yet, though she does write. But she's an awesome graphic designer and did most of the graphics that I'm using here in Indie Econ and did one of the covers in the writing contest. She's also done a number of fan covers for my Riz Clan Legends. I'm pretty sure that both of these covers were done with the trick she's about to show you, though she may correct me. One point of note is that if you're watching this on my blog, I will have all the links in the blog post, so you don't have to run away for, to YouTube unless you want to. I'm not going to stop you. Over to you, Aaliyah. Hi, I'm Aaliyah Harper, and today I'm going to show you a few tricks so that you can use less stock photography in your book covers, and they can look a little more artsy. So I'm going to show you how to do a watercolor texture on your own with no artistic ability, and how to change some colors in the photo editing process. I'm going to use a program called GIMP. All of the stuff that I am using in the video will be in the description box below. If you're watching this video on a blog, there is no description section, so you can just click on the video. There should be a YouTube icon on the bottom right corner. So you can just click that and it'll take you to the YouTube site so that you can get to this description box. So first you're going to need some watercolor brushes. I use these water brushes, again they're linked into the description, and, and you're going to need watercolor paints. There's a couple of different kinds that you can buy. You can buy them in a tube or you can buy them on a palette. I use this palette. And you're also going to need some watercolor paper. Watercolor paper comes in hot press and cold press. It's just the way that they are made. Um, cold press has a little bit more texture than non-cold press, so it's really just whatever you prefer. So we're going to just start off with a basic flat wash. A flat wash just means that it's flat, it's just one color, and it's pretty even. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this onto the paper so that there is a drop and you want to make sure that um, your brush is completely clean if you've used it before. And then I'm just going to pick a color and I'm just going to swirl it around in the paint so that the, um, the paint is liquid. And then I'm just going to brush it along like this so that it'll, it'll spread out in the water but it will not go around, um, it will not go outside of where the water is. Okay, and that is a flat wash. Now I'm going to clean off my brush. So that is a flat wash. Now I'm going to turn this flat wash into a wet on wet, which is more than one color. So I'm going to pick a contrasting color. Um, so let's, I'm just going to do blue. So again, I'm going to squeeze water onto this palette. And then I'm just going to dip it on. And if you want, you can kind of spread it around. and then it kind of mixes together and swirls together. And that is how you can create your own watercolor textures. Okay, so I'm in GIMP right now, and I just pasted, this is a um, watercolor wet on wet that I did uh, last night. And I took a picture of it and instead of scanning it in because my camera is higher quality than um, my printer is. <clears throat> and sometimes that's just easier. And so I just pasted it in. I haven't fitted it to the screen or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this icon right here and just... Oh, make sure and click this right here because it will uh, keep it from getting all out of proportion. Um, so I'm just going to scale it, and obviously it's loading. Okay. 
All right, and this is just sort of like a rip-in, it's like a rip-in space effect. So, um, there's a little bit of uh, eraser marks from where I erased my uh, pencil lettering in here. So, obviously, I don't want that. And then it's a little bit yellowed in here, and I think I kind of want to change the color of this right here a little bit. So, just to make it a little more vibrant and dramatic and that is really easy to do oh I have to name this layer okay so I'm gonna click the lasso tool and I'm just gonna select all of this and I will see you back when I'm done selecting it so what I'm doing is I'm clicking edit cut and then edit paste and then it's going to bring it to a separate layer so you're going to make sure one to name it and then I can just delete this layer right here and it took out all of that and made it just white okay so now I have this layer I want to adjust this by doing layers on top not this specific layer, but I don't want to go outside into this white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Control, click, and then Alpha to Selection. And that selects only this, and that means that you can only work in this space. So you can create a new layer. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So what I like to do is switch the color to black because this is always the top color is always the color that you use but it's really handy because now you can still have two colors up there without getting rid of the other one and then I'm going to select the brush tool now for this it doesn't really matter so I'm just going to use a really big brush just so I can get it done faster and I'm just going to color all over this now don't freak out it looks black it is black obviously um, but I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and then it just makes it darker and of course you can still adjust the opacity of this but I actually think I like it like that yeah now if you want to change the color of it this right here means that you can duplicate the layer and that means that you can you can duplicate the layer so that you ne you can always save the bottom layer just in case you mess something up. Of course, there's always undo, but still, maybe you like the old version better. So it's really handy to do that. So I'm going to take this off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate this layer. So you're going to go up to colors and desaturate. And then see it's desaturated but still has that texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer, select it to overlay, and then I'm going to pick a color. So maybe I want it to be like gold, an orange thing. And then I'm just adding a feather to the brush. And then see it changes some of the colors. Now since it's watercolor, you're probably going to want to use a couple of different colors. So let's try like a teal, maybe. So uh, that's good enough for now. And then if you want it darker, you can always add that on top. So that's how you can change the colors. Now you might want to blend this in a little bit more um, just with some different colors. You might want to make this brush a little smaller. Um, yeah, you can change it to whatever colors you want so that it's very customized. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the rest of the posts for Indie Econ. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!